Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. The seven star terror raid event for Empoleon is now live in Scarlet and Valley. We're going to go over all of the details as well as the best builds for soloing this with in your game. So running from the 2nd of February as of recording this video and running over this weekend until the 4th of February, the Empoleon terror raid event is now live in Scarlet and Violet. It will be returning the following weekend from the 9th until the 11th of February for its second phase in Scarlet and Violet. And here are the details that we're going to see. It is going to be an Ice Terror type Pokemon. It's going to be level 100. It will have its ability competitive, which is its hidden ability. And it will have the Mightiest Mark. The moves it's going to have access to are Surf, Flash Cannon, Ice Beam, Grass Knot, Snowscape are its additional moves alongside Blizzard and Iron Defense. And it will have a modest nature, no held item, and can only be caught once per save file. Now, once you've caught the Empoleon, it will drop a variety of good high cost items, including large XL candies. You're going to get calciums, lots of ice terror shards. You're going to get TMs and the chance of an ability patch and ability capsules, as well as bottle caps, PP ups and other high cost items. So it's a good raid to run through and farm for the items while the event is running. Like I say, it will be running from the 2nd of February as recording this video until the 4th for its first phase and returning on the 9th of February and running until the 11th for its second phase before it goes away from Scarlet and Violet altogether. Now to access this event in your game, you're going to need to come to your Poker Portal. Make sure you are online when you do this and then come down to Mystery Gifts and then check Poker Portal news. This will update all of the dens in Paldea. Now this event will only appear in Paldea on your maps if you have the DLC. Don't try looking for it in Kitakami or in the Terrarium in the Blueberry Academy. It will only appear there. So once you've found the den, you want to head over to it and we'll go over the builds that we're going to cover in today's video. So the first build is going to be Mew. So Mew is going to be a really good option. I realize that it is a mythical. It isn't something that everyone has available. To. It was a mystery gift Pokemon during the Mew 2 7 star terror raid. So if you manage to get one during that event, and great you've got one in game but we have got an alternative build if you haven't got a Mew but Mew is going to be probably the quickest build to run through the Empoleon with so you want to have Mew at level 100 you want to make sure that you have hyper trained all of its IVs with bottle caps make sure they're all set to 31 its terror typing is going to be fighting it's going to have the held item of a shell bell and it will have the moveset of Acid Spray, Nasty Plot, Skill Swap, and Aura Sphere. The EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in Special Attack and 252 EVs in Special Defense. And it will have a modest nature with those remaining 6 EVs put into HP. And that's going to be the Mew build. Next up, we're going to have, for those of you that don't have access to Mew, a Pokemon that everyone in Skull and Violet has access to. And that is going to be Vaporeon. It will have the fire terror typing again going to be set to level 100 make sure you do hyper train all of those ivs so they're set to 31 it will have the held item of a shell bell so it's got a line of recovery throughout the raid the ability is the big important thing on the vaporeon it will have the water absorber ability the move set is going to be sunny day calm mind haze and weather ball now weather ball is a tm that you're going to need access to as well his is a level up move calm mind is a tm as well as sunny day EV spread for this Vaporeon is going to be 252 EVs in Special Attack, 252 EVs in Special Defense with a modest nature again and there's six remaining EVs put into HP. So the first thing that you're going to want to look for in the raid if you're coming in with the Vaporeon or the Mew or any other Pokemon is going to be looking at the partner Pokemon. If you come into the raid and you see an Intimidator as your partnering Pokemon, Probably best just to run from the raid and then re-enter it trying to get different partnering Pokemon to the raid with Empoleon because this Intimidate, as you're going to see here from this Star Raptor, is going to activate the competitive ability on the Empoleon and that's something that we don't want to have to contest with throughout the raid. It's going to boost its special attack by two stages every time that it does take a stat drop. And that's not something that we want to deal with because it will be hitting a lot harder throughout the raid than we really want it to. At this point, it's best here because the Star Raptor you can see has been knocked out. It's going to come onto the field again. It's going to activate the competitive ability once again. And if we do take a look at the Empoleon, it's plus four at the start of the battle. We haven't even made a move yet. So like I say, in these situations, it's best just to run away from the raid and re-enter it to try and get 
better partnering Pokemon. Okay, so we've got no Intimidators on our side of the field partnering us. So we're kind of good to progress here in this raid. Now, turn zero, you're going to see the Snowscape set up from the Empoleon. It's going to summon the hill to the field for five turns. And then it's going to fire off a Blizzard as well. This is where the RNG can kind of catch you out a little bit, where it can freeze you this turn. It does worth just resetting the raid and coming back into it. But we get through it fine. Turn one normally is going to look like this, where we go for a sunny day and overwrite that snowscape, take the hail away from the field and get the sun onto the field. And we are going to take grass knots from the Empoleon for these next few turns. But what we're going to concentrate on is just chasing the fact of being able to terrestrialize. So turn two, we're going to lock in with the weather ball, just start firing that off. It's also going to heal us with our shell bell item as well. So it keeps us pretty healthy going forward. The thing that you need to keep an eye out for is the Empoleon stats. Make sure that it's not getting any competitive boost because your partnering Pokemon can kind of sneak in attacks that might lower the stats on the Empoleon, making that competitive boost active and it will be hitting a lot harder. So that will affect your ability in this early stage of the game to be able to kind of survive to get to the point to be able to terrestrialize because it is going to rely on those grass knots to do big, super effective damage to you. So if it has gotten a a competitive boost at all if it's taken any stat drops you get a plus two boost to its special attack and those attacks are going to hit a lot harder but basically like we're doing these next three turns after you've set the sunny day up is just clicking the weather ball button basically what that does is the sun on the field means weather ball is a fire type attack which is great exactly what we want now you're going to see the shield set up pretty early on from the empoleon here and now we're waiting on it nullifying the stat uh, changes and abilities on our side of the field. Now, once you've seen that, you're going to be free to start Calm Minding. Now we're in a position to terrestrialize. We're going to click in with that Calm Mind. We do need to keep an eye on the sun on the field as well. So we to use Weather Ball, we're going to need the sun in effect. So that's going to take a turn to set up. This is why Vaporeon might be a bit slower than some of the other options that we have, like the Mew. But it is very consistent. Once you are terrestrialized, first phase of this raid is kind of done and you're going to be able to close this out you're not going to be taking very much damage from the empoleon and it's just a race against the raid timer here so we're in a good position where we can probably get three calm mines up before we go for our next attack so you can see it's going to lock in with the grass not not going to be doing too much damage like i say just keep an eye on the empoleon it hasn't had that competitive boost and we have got the sun in effect on the field we haven't got it yet so that's something that we're going to have to do before we do go for an attack but we can lock in like i say getting these calm mines up now and then getting the sun up to go for an attack so we'll get three calm mines up i don't want to get too greedy at this stage in the battle either because i think it will nullify our stats again at some stage we don't want to kind of waste these turns where we're going to have to just commit another three turns to getting these calm mines up so this is the third calm mind that we're going for the next turn we're going to go for a sunny day and then we're going to launch off those weather balls you can see if you do see a surf come out from the empoleon it is just going to heal you so that's a really nice aspect of the ability we have the water absorb on a vaporeon and then we can lock in with that sunny day get that set up that's going to be in effect for five turns and now we're going to be in a position where we can fire off these weather balls you don't want to get too greedy like i say with calm minds because it will nullify our stats at some point. And when we know the Empoleon is going to be at 50% health, it will nullify the stats on its side of the field, our side of the field again, and it will set up an iron defense as well. So that's the next thing we're going to be looking out for. But you can see the damage that we're doing is not too bad. And we're going to catch up with that raid timer as well. And at this stage, we're not taking any damage either. We're not in any kind of danger of getting knocked out from the Empoleon. It's just not going to be able to do very much at all. So making sure you get the partnering Pokemon correct in this raid is quite important, but also the kind of the early stage setups with the Vaporeon is, is important as well for this to get to this stage of the battle so you can kind of close things out. Now another Weather Ball here will likely knock out that shield or will be very close to knocking it out as it is going to lock in with an Ice Beam and will once again just lock in with another Weather Ball. Just keeping an eye the whole time on the, the Sun and making sure it is in effect on the field because otherwise weather ball if there's no sun it will just be a normal type attack and it's not going to be hitting or super effective damage and that's kind of the, the thing that we want to avoid because we don't have turns to waste in this battle so you can see the empoleon removing ne negative effects from its side of the field 
and it will probably nullify stat boosts on our side of the field right now as well so the shield breaking it's about that 50 percent health mark and we might no we're not going to be able to get another sneaky attack off there we go nullifies stats on our side of the field so we want to concentrate at this stage going for those calm mines again and this is just going to be the next three turns where we just boost up our special attack and special defense so we can hit a little bit harder to close out this raid otherwise it's going to take us a little bit of time and we are like i say against the clock in this raid and uh, the vaporing is pretty consistent like i just like the ability of it once it's terrestrialized it's not taking any damage from the empoleon if it starts to get out of control with those competitive boosts for whatever reason if you're partnering pokemon or activating the competitive ability you've got the haze there to fall back on so you can remove those but you can see the damage output from the Empoleon. It's literally got nothing it can hit you for super effective damage with. So we've got three Calm Mines set up now. We can just check our stats. And we want to get that Sunny Day active on the field again. Because that's faded now. And then we're going to be in a position for the next five turns. Where we can just utilize the Weather Ball. From this range it should be enough to kind of pick up the knockout. But we'll be able to see what it looks like going forward the only caveat i guess to this would be the flash cannon if it does revert to using it it can lower your special defense by one stage as a kind of side effect to that so that's something just to keep in mind it can weaken you but you've got the calm mind to negate that as well so you can see here at plus three we're doing more than enough damage and two more of these is going to be more than enough to take down this empoleon and honestly the fact that the Vaporeon is available to everyone in the game, it's in the base games, you're going to be able to put this build together no matter what stage of the game you're coming into. Uh, you're going to have an easy time dealing with the Empoleon with this specific build. Mm. Maybe one more, maybe two more might be enough to uh, to get it. Depends if our partner in Pokemon can get that little bit of extra chip damage. But like I say, with the Vaporeon build, you're not going to have any issues dealing with the Vaporeon the empoleon over this weekend and you can run through it to farm for the high cost items but i do feel like probably the best option maybe a little bit more reliable than the mew but it's as easy as that if you just follow the steps and some of the tips that i've said throughout this raid battle here with the empoleon you're going to have no trouble at all dealing with it with this vaporeon farming it if you want to do that throughout this weekend if you've used the vaporeon over this weekend to take down the empoleon do let me know down in the comment section below I think it's a really unique build and uh, definitely one that I've had a lot of fun playing with, especially on stream before we've done this video tonight after the raid went live. But as you can see, as easy as that to take down and you're going to get all of the nice item drops, lots of candies and things like that, which is always useful in the game. And for the Mew, also when you come into the Empoleon, it's pretty important to take note of the partnering Pokemon that you've got next to you. If there is an Intimidate user, again, just come out of the raid and come back into it to have preferable partnering Pokemon. Again, on turn zero, it's going to go for the Snowscape and then the Blizzard and then hit into you. Unfortunately, there we do take a critical hit, which may affect us. But the turn one, if you are going forward with this, is to just go for a skill swap onto this Empoleon and take that competitive ability away from it so it doesn't have the ability to have those stats boosted freely throughout the raid when you're trying to conduct your setup you're going to take a bit of damage but the first things that you're going to want to do in this raid is chase your terrestrialization get these acid sprays off it's likely throughout this setup you're going to get knocked out you may be able to get through this this setup here getting these three acid sprays off and not be knocked out which is great but there's a lot of the the chances are that you're going to be knocked out through this process but that's super fine don't worry about that at all you want to just continue going for these acid sprays it's going to reduce the special defense on the empoleon by two stages every time you use it and it'll work through the shield as well so you really want to reduce these special defense down as much as possible and at the same time while you're using these acid sprays it is ticking down your terrestrialization counter now because of that critical hit that we took earlier on you're going to get knocked out likelihood is you're not going to be in the same position as what we are right here so you'll probably be able to get the third acid spray off the next turn and not have this five second penalty but after you've got that third one off it's likely the empoleon going to set up its shield pretty early on in this raid like i say if you're in a similar position to what we are here the next acid spray that we go for to get those three off to get it down to minus six special defense will still work through the shield so that's super fine so we'll get that last acid spray off here and then because we're in a good healthy position as well we can probably concentrate down this next turn on going for these nasty plots now something to bear in mind if you do get knocked out you will lose the competitive ability 
you did skill swap off the Empoleon earlier, but that's super fine. It's not something that you need to rely on in this raid. Uh, we take an attack there and we're going to start getting these nasty plots boosted up on our side of the field. Good to try and wait for when it nullifies the stat boost on your side of the field. Uh, but we're running a bit low on health and that's a big thing to keep in mind with the Mew. Once you do Terrastalize, you want to keep an eye on your health. You want to make sure that you are getting attacks off at the right time. So you aren't getting to the position where you can potentially be knocked out. That is going to be a big caveat to this raid. So getting the nasty plot off, we've got one off. So we're plus two special attack and the Empoleon is minus six special defense. So this should do good damage once we have Terrastalize. So locking in with that, you can see good damage. Going to get us a nice bunch of health recovery as well through that shell bell item and we're getting close to knocking out that shield so we're in a position now where we can just start really cutting through get rid of the shield and then concentrate on the rest of the battle here to close this out as quick as possible now it's nullified the stat changes on our side of the field so taking away that nasty plot boost we can spend a turn going for another nasty plot getting ourselves back up to plus two and maybe if you've got room go for another one after this where we can get to plus four but it does depend on the damage you've taken up to this point in the battle. So we're pretty comfortable at this stage. We'll go for another one here. This will put us to plus four. This will mean that we're going to be able to remove this shield this next turn. Or if we've got room, I think you just have to judge it as the raid's going on. You can go for another nasty plot. But just bear in mind, you don't want to get yourself knocked out and lose terrestrialization. And if you get a turn like this where you do get frozen, that's not ideal. You're going to have to rely on the heal cheer here because... The freeze is the one thing that will affect you throughout the raid. Um, it, it's going to stop you in your tracks and you don't want to risk getting knocked out. Like I say, just go for the heal chair. You've got three of them to spare. It's going to be something where RNG can happen throughout the raid, uh, but you can kind of get around that with the heal chair. So you just do, do that. If you get frozen twice in a row, you're going to have to use another heal chair. I can't believe this. The RNG is super bad. So your RNG is not going to be this bad, but I guess it's a good example to show if your RNG is pretty bad, you can still get around this in the raid by just having to go for another heal cheer. You're not going to need to rely on these too much. We're still plus four special attack. The Empoleon's minus six special defense. As long as we get through this turn, Surf thankfully can't freeze us. But it does nullify stats and abilities on our side of the field. So we haven't got those boosts anymore. So we're going to have to go for another nasty plot here. So you can get bad RNG where it is going to slow you down slightly. And you can see we're racing against the time now with the raid timer. But we should be all right after this where we'll be able to take at least one more hit and get a nasty plot up. Or we can start getting some health back and then cutting through this Empoleon. But like I say, if your RNG is really bad throughout the raid, it is going to be tricky. But most of the time you're going to have not as bad rng as what we've had and you're going to be able to start cutting through it now we're plus four with a special attack it's minus six we can do some damage we're going to recover all that health lost so the mean pretty good consistent even if you're getting bad rng you're still going to be able to do the raid in pretty decent time but it's not as good as probably the vaporeon after you've got that terrestrialization set up where you're in no danger of ever getting knocked out. The Mew is in danger of getting knocked out throughout this raid, which is a little bit of a, a scary prospect as well, especially if you can see something like the competitive ability uh, before you're able to skill swap it getting activated or anything like that. But at this stage now, we're going to be in a good point just to get it in two hits. So you can see with those plus four special attack boosts that we've got, two nasty pop boosts, and then all of the, the special defense boosts that the, NAS, the Empoleon's taken, it's going to be pretty easy. It has nullified the stat drops on its side of the field now. Of course, it does that at 50% health. So we can go for an Acid Spray. And then the next turn is probably going to be in range for a Forest Sphere to pick it up. So we will be fine. But I mean, we've had absolutely horrendous RNG throughout this raid. And we've still done it in pretty good time. So the Mew is a very good option. Uh, but you can have some bad RNG. I think this raid is probably one of the most RNG dependent raids that we've had uh, in seven star raids totally that we've we've seen in Scarlet and Violet. So very temperamental. But with the two builds that we've got in this video, you're going to have no trouble taking on the Empoleon. You're going to have to have some very, very bad luck not to be able to beat it in your game. But once you've done it, like I say, you're going to get all these rewards. And uh, the two builds that we've covered today, the Mew and the Vaporeon, whichever one you use, are going to be very good at taking down this Empoleon, farming through it over the weekend and uh, making sure that you can catch it while this event is available.
So friends, that is everything for today. I hope you found the Mew and the Vaporeon builds helpful. All the details, as always, for the builds will be down in the description if you want to take a look at them after the video. If you've used these builds, do let me know down in the comment section below which one is your favorite or which one you have used to beat the Empoleon. If you've got another build that you've been successful with, do let me know as well. Share it and we'll be able to share it within the community to make it easier for everyone to be able to beat the Empoleon as the event goes live over this weekend. Very crazy raid, but a very fun one all the same. And I just love the Vaporeon build. So I would love to hear what you think. I hope you found the video useful. If you have, please drop a like. Do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with our Pokemon Skull and Violet content. I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.